I'm chasing retro New York, the Times Square of the 80s. I caught up with Jan Staller. He's a well-known photographer who's been published in the New York Times, New York Magazine, Harper's Magazine, among many others. I caught up with him in his West Village studio on Charles Street. When I was speaking to Jan, he took me back to his, to his younger days when he was already a full-fledged photographer, but just in his 20s. At the time, his expertise and his passion was actually taking photos of the New York City urban landscape. But when he would go to work at the New York Times, he would often pass by two things that struck his attention. One was a fortune teller machine, and the other one was a shoe repair shop. I asked him, let's talk first about that shoe repair shop. What did you like so much about it? This was a very dingy looking shoe repair place. And um, this guy behind the uh, smeared window just was kind of intriguing to me. And uh, so I went to photograph that. Then I asked him about that fortune teller machine. I have never seen one. Uh, born in New York, never seen one of these in Times Square. This fortune telling machine was near the top of the stairs of the 42nd Street subway sta station near the 8th Avenue side. While he was taking pictures of this fortune teller machine, two young men who were very intimidating approached him. These two characters demanded that I take their picture. And uh, it's, a, it's a bit thr threatening for me, a kid from Long Island. I was just in my 20s. But uh, if they were going to demand that I take their picture, they were going to do it my way. And I had a tripod, which was already set up. So I just backed it up a little bit. And uh, I said to the fellow on the left, um, Listen, I want to show your colors. Can you take off your jacket? And so he took off his, his jacket. And I said, let's put it on your shoulder here. And I'm kind of spreading it out so you could see the logo. So at the time, Times Square was known for not being the kind of area polite company would want to hang out in. What I found was that you know, these are the people that polite company would just hurry by uh, just because the generalized fear that people have of uh, the urban uh, neighbors who may not uh, be of um, uh, dressing in a certain way or behaving in a certain way. And the Times Square was con considered to be a den of inequity and, and uh, the people that went there seemed to be looking for each other and, and so for the attractions that were there. The drugs, prostitution. Possibly. <laughs> but I found it all... You, you didn't see any of that? No. <laughs> so Bill, uh, how does he feel about it today though? Like, it's so different now. I mean, I go back, we talk about this all the time, about how Rudy came in as mayor and really changed the whole thing. All of a sudden, you're arresting jaywalkers, and you have the whole climate changed, and it became a really family-friendly place, Times Square. How does he feel about it now? Oh, he loves Times Square. I mean, he loves yeah. New York. He still lives in New York. Um, he loves Times Square back then, but obviously Times Square back in the 70s when it had that bad reputation, he was able to bring out the beauty in it.